Hello everyone, in this video I'll be explaining the train physics. On the example of trains, I will be presenting Newton's three laws of motion. There are many forces acting on a moving train. These forces can be split up into external and internal forces. However, in order to study the effects of forces applied on the train, we have to imagine the train as a material point. The four main forces acting on a moving train are pulling force, or force exerted by the engine, gravitational force, frictional force, and air resistance. The pulling force is controlled by the driver of the train and favors the direction of motion of the train, whilst air resistance and friction oppose the direction of motion of the train. I think there are some interesting physics behind friction. First of all, friction is a force that slows down motion. The rolling friction is caused by the motion of the wheels of the train. Assume that A is a contact point between the wheel and the rail. Since the motion direction of A is opposite to that of the train, then friction occurs to prevent the motion of A as follows. Friction equal mu times n, where n is the weight of the train. Mu is the rolling friction coefficient of the wheel. The friction force depends on the mass of an object, plus the coefficient of sliding friction between the object and the surface on which it slides. Subtract this force from the applied force to find the acceleration of the object. Newton's second laws says that the acceleration of an object A is proportional to the force F applied on it, and proportional factor is the object's mass M. If you're interested in acceleration, rearrange the equation to read. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. Let's solve some problems. Problem 1. A train of mass 20 tons is moving with acceleration A, 0.3 meter per second squared, and has initial speed uh, V0, which is equal to 54 kilometers per hour. Find the braking force acting on the train, the time it takes to come to a complete stop, and the distance traveled during this time. To solve the problem, we will use the equation Final velocity V equals initial velocity V0 plus acceleration A times time taken. According to the problem, V0 equals 54 km per hour equals 54,000 meters per hour, which is equal to 15 meters per second. So we can rearrange the equation. Time equals V0 divided by A equals 15 divided by 0 0.3 equals 50 seconds now we can find the braking force braking force is equal to mass times acceleration which is equal to 0 0.3 times 20 tons since one since 10 newtons is equal to 1 kilogram we can write it as 6 kilonewtons in order to find the distance we will use the formula v square minus v0 squared equal 2ad so distance d is equal to v0 squared divided by 2a d equals 15 squared divided by 0 0.6 which is equal to 375 meters 
and thus the final results are the time taken is equal to 50 seconds the braking force is equal to 6 kilonewtons and the distance traveled is equal to 175 meters let's check out another problem in train with mass of 14 tons traveling 600 meters requires the necessary speed of 144 kilometers per hour considering the movement to be uniformly accelerated determine the acceleration time the acceleration and the force that gives the train this acceleration to find the acceleration we will use the first formula of kinematics v square equal v zero square plus two times acceleration times the change in distance so we can rearrange that as acceleration equals 1600 meters square per second square divided by 1200 meters that is equal to 4 by 3 meter per second square now let's find time so when initial velocity is equal to zero we can use the formula distance equal initial velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared divided by 2 and rearranging this formula we get time equal to 2 distance divided by a taken in the square root and if we plug in the values we will get 30 seconds now we have to find the force and according to Newton's second law of motion force equals time force equal mass times acceleration so it is equal to 14 thousand times 4 by 3 equals 18 thousand six hundred and sixty six newtons rolling bearings roller bearings are used mainly in locomotives diesel or all electric for wagons wheel application these bearings are used with an axle box housing and end fittings the assembly of two railway wheels and an axle is commonly called the wheel set which rotates and is supported by bearings that are called axle box bearings roller bearings carry a load by placing rolling elements such as balls or rollers between two bearing rings called races the relative motion of the races cause the rolling elements to roll with very little rolling resistance and with little sliding. Maglev trains. The evolution of mass transportation has fundamentally shifted human civilization. In the 21st century, there are few countries using powerful electromagnets to develop high-speed trains, called maglev trains. These trains float over guideways using the basic principles of magnets to replace the old steel wheel and the track trains. There is no real friction to speak of, meaning these trains can hit speeds of hundreds of miles per hour. The magnetic field created in this wire and battery experiment is the simple idea behind a maglev train rail system. There are three components to this system. One, a large electrical power source. Two, metal coins lining the guideway or track. Three, large guidance magnets attached to the underside of the train.